A continuación presentamos el devocional diario traducido al inglés. En español lo puede encontrar de lunes a viernes a las 9 horas en las Islas Canarias por el canal de YouTube. Centro Evangélico Vida Nueva. Dejamos más información abajo en la descripción del vídeo. Good morning, my dear brethren and friends. May the Lord bless you very richly. Today we're going to be reading John chapter 6 verse 29. And the word of the Lord says the following. Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he sent. I believe that one of the things that we should all do, including those evangelical Christians, is to review our beliefs, to analyze our theology and the things that we do, so that we can realize if we are doing it according to the Bible and coincide with it, or there are things that we have seen that other people do, and we just repeat them without comparing, without looking at it, them at the light of scriptures. If we're preaching and practicing and teaching, is pleasing to the Lord, or maybe it pleases men, but it's an authentic abomination before the eyes of the Lord. If every day, if from time to time at least, we would re, re, realize the things we say and the things we believe and practice, probably in the light of the Word of God, we would be very surprised. But what is the problem? That in, in many churches, in many denominations, people that preach and do what they do, they have not ever compared that before the scriptures, but they have simply limited themselves to repeating and copying what others are doing that have been successful and have gone well, but I repeat, they have never verified whether what they're doing, what they're preaching, what they are telling the people to do or believe or accepting is truly biblical, whether it is pleasing to the Lord. They have limited to uh, copy, imitate, or read books, to ask advice to men, but they have never approached God with an open and sincere heart, and they have asked the Lord, Lord, do you, do, do, are you pleased with what I'm doing, with my resources, with my life, what I'm teaching from the pulpit in which you have placed me? We would be very surprised. Now, the world is just the way it is, not because God is bad, or because he has forgotten us, and he's tired of men and no longer wants to help them or bless them or restore them. Absolutely not. The world is the way it is, and the nations, in spite of their wealth, in spite of their resources, they find themselves in the situation they're in because they have turned their backs on God. The love of God, of money, the materialism has blinded them. The understanding of millions and millions of human beings idolatry, witchcraft, lost, the disobedience in short, it has been in first place on the list of priorities of many people. And of course, when a person has power, when he has authority because he's a mayor, a governor, a politician, if his heart is not in line with God, he will soon, very soon, allow himself to be contaminated to be a bribed or bought. And that power, that authority that he has, instead of using it to benefit the citizens of his country, the people that have voted him for him and have supported him, what happens is that he begins to take advantage of his position with, in time, of his authority, of his position. And after a while, you realize that I meant has become an, another billionaire. And, and one wonders, where is he getting that much money? Because he lived on a salary. Where has he gotten all that wealth? If, if that person started with little, and he doesn't even know how much he has right now. My dear brethren, when man turns his back on God, he becomes a dangerous person, selfish, overbearing, arrogant, And instead of being directed by the Spirit of God, he is directed by his passions and desires, by carnality, by his desire of prominence, by love of riches. But by the way, 
The Bible says that the love of money is the root of all evil. Because of love of money, people will do tremendous things that we cannot even imagine that a person can dedicate themselves to do that. But because of the money, he has been able to renounce his principles, his values, the essential values, and has become in a very unscrupulous person that if he has to deceive, deceive, or manipulate, manipulates, and watch out. Not because we're believers, even pastors, we're not vulnerable to being carried away by the current of this world. Be careful, because the heart is deceitful, the word says, and above all things, we have to take care of our hearts. How many people in the ministry started well, and because of the love of money, they use their authority, their position, their anointing. They have begun to practice, to teach, and to share things that have nothing to do with what the Bible says, the Word of God. When we turn our back on God, our heart deceives us, our feelings, our emotions are enthroned, and we begin to be victims and slaves of ourselves. And instead of following God's designs, and instead of paying attention to what He said and the example that He left, we begin to let ourselves be carried away by things, trends, things that other people are doing and that apparently they have done well. And then people travel to different parts of the world and, and they bring systems, methods, and things, believing that when they also do them exactly the same way that their mentors, they will, are they also going to be supported and blessed by the Lord. And how crazy it is when we see people, let's say with good intentions, but that we believe that we have to imitate and import methods from other nations so that God can bless your ministry, your church, and your work. It is terrible when the Word of God tells us that if we obey the Lord, and if we have communion with Him, He will give us all things that our life needs. And I'm not talking about clothes and food, that, that is, we have to be more than satisfied and happy but also the things that your ministry needs, the support, the favor of God, so that your life will be a life that is useful in the hands of God and not a useless and not a stumbling block like unfortunately many have uh, converted into, that they no longer realize how far they are from the heart of God, that they're so cold and they have gotten in that materialistic role that because of the love of money, they have prostituted themselves and forgotten of that one that uh, called them and that called them to be holy and they should be holy in all the way of living. May the Lord guard our lives and our hearts so we realize that the only one that we have to follow and imitate is our Lord Jesus Christ. And if they, if you ask yourself, how was he? How did he speak? How did he behave? Well, we have the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. And you have more than enough material so that you can know how you have to behave in the circumstance, in the place that God has placed you. May the Lord keep us every day of our lives and that this weekend that lies ahead is really a time that we dedicate it to the Lord. How much time is dedicated to your businesses, to your pleasures, to your dreams and ambitions, to your whims in short? And how much time do you truly dedicate to de dedicating to serving the Lord. Each one has to be honest and sincere and ask them themselves, are, am I serving God or who am I serving? Some people do many things and they believe that they're serving God. But did God tell you to do what you're doing, to teach what you're preaching, to practice what you're doing, and even trying to impose and pressure other people? Let's ask ourselves these days that we have ahead of us before the next devotional. Lord, what do you want to do with my life? Examine your beliefs. Check your theology to see if it matches with God's. Or do you expect God to adapt to you instead of you adapting and following him? Well, my dear brethren, I encourage you as every morning to pray, to put this day in the hands of our good God, and let ourselves be guided 
by him. Open your heart and let his Holy Spirit minister to you and speak to you and use every portion that you read of the blessed word of God so that you can rectify and correct the curse in the event that is necessary. And if you're truly doing things well, decently and in order, I encourage you to continue that way. Don't let yourself be contaminated by anything or anyone. You don't have to care what others say or do. What you have to do is please the God that call you and not men. Do not live on appearances. It seems that what you do pleases some people, but is unpleasing in the eyes of the Lord. Let's pray this morning, asking for his guidance and protection. Blessed Heavenly Father, from the depth of our hearts, for the privilege that you give us to analyze in the light of the sacred scriptures of your word, of the Bible, if what we do, if what we say, is truly coinciding with your heart and it is pleasing to your eyes. Keep us, my God, from all danger and all evil, and help us to please you in everything that we do and say. We put this weekend ahead of us in your hands. Guide us, enlighten us, and give us the necessary wisdom to please you in everything. We put our lives in your hands, and as always, we ask you everything with thanksgiving. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. My dear brethren, may the Lord bless you very, very richly. We will be, Lord willing, this, uh, this weekend in Alicante, where we're going to be inaugurating on Sunday morning a place of worship that the Lord has allowed us to rent. And there, with our bro brethren in Alicante, with all around or from anywhere that want to be with us, they will be welcome. The information of the address, the schedule, etc., has already been published on several locations on our web page and in Facebook. We will publish it today so that everybody that wants to be with us that special day can be. May the Lord bless you. We continue to pray for each other, supporting each other, knowing that the Lord is with us. And we will always give him all the glory and the honor. May the Lord bless you, my dear brother.